The law system in ECO is really unique among games because it's entirely formed by the players themselves. And what it forms a lot of is the economics in the game. By itself, the ECO game is completely lawless. But how do you go about creating these laws? I'm going to show you several laws that cover a variety of taxes as well as a reusable law that supports government funded bills of any kind anywhere on the server. So whether you're a government official in the game or a common citizen, you don't want to miss this one because all of these laws can affect you and your own economic success. There's always been a law system and the ability to create your own laws in ECO, but the 9.0 release brought out a huge improvement in how these are created, and there was a lot of refactoring of the game in the back end to help better integrate the laws with a wider array of normal gameplay activities. This new interface not only has better performance, but once you understand the system, it actually does provide you a fair bit of, I'll call it, capability on what you can control. I'm going to be showing specific examples of laws you'll be able to copy and use yourself, but I'm going to briefly go over the overall construct and approach to the law system so you'll be able to modify them or create your own a little bit better. First, you start off with some triggering event. Think of it as the action that needs to take place that will trigger whatever thing you want the law to do. For instance, if you wanted to tax people, the taxation is the thing you want to do. But what is the triggering event that will enact the taxation? In this tax example, the trigger is any time currency is being traded. It can either be something very specific like chopping a stump, or the event can just be something periodic, either set as a global timer or civilian timer. If it's something you want applied to each civilian, and potentially something that even works a little different, depending on some statistic of the citizen, like how much wealth they have, then you want to use the citizen timer. The global timer seems more appropriate for some general thing you want to have happen on the server that isn't specific to any individual citizen. The other two parts are an if-then clause, which are fairly straightforward. When the given event occurs, the if-then section of the law is listened for further directions, so you can further narrow what's going to happen with the if-then statements. What's really interesting about the relationship between the triggering event and the if-then statements is that your available choices will vary depending upon the event. As a hint, if you hover over a term, it will give you a list of the parameters that this law can potentially evaluate for further scrutiny in the law. Interesting. Discovering this one thing about hovering over key terms in the law system to pull up the parameters has been enormously valuable in creating laws that operate the way I want. Given that little bit of background, let's take a look at some of these laws. Here, we have a basic sales tax. Now, the easiest way to make a sales tax in the game is to go to the actual treasury table and set a sales tax percentage right there. That will operate like a typical sales tax in the real world, where a person buying the goods also pays the sales tax. But we wanted to work that a little differently on our server, and I'll tell you why. We didn't want to tax the person buying the goods. We wanted to tax the person selling the goods. We encourage the players to buy products for a slightly higher price than what people are selling them. This creates the opportunity for people to make money just transporting goods from one place to the other and getting paid the difference, like you've heard me mention in other videos. So this tax law is part of that, by putting the onus of the sales tax on the store owner, rather than the transporter. Along with that, to help out our cooks, is a food subsidy that pays back that same percentage of tax for any food items that are purchased. Cooks already have enough of a hard time making money just selling food, particularly later in the game, so we didn't want to take any more of that money away from them. Next is a property tax. This uses that citizen timer I was talking about that occurs daily, 
but we filter the property tax a little bit to give brand new players on the server a little bit of a break in the if part of the statement by not taxing them until they have taken their second skill. At that point, it taxes each citizen for the number of claims or properties owned by some specific amount. This law also works really well because it scales with the amount of property the player naturally acquires as they get farther and farther into the game. So it seems really fair. Our government also sells land claims in addition to the ones you get for learning skills. So players that are particularly eager to claim large quantities of land have to pay the most tax. The luxury tax was next, and this one is an attempt to prevent hoarding of large sums of cash. We let people hold up to 10,000 coins without having to pay this extra tax. But once you surpass that amount, you start paying a very small amount that scales directly with how much wealth you have. And yes, this is based on your total wealth across all your accounts you may have. So there's no way to hide your money out of your personal account into store accounts or anything else. It calculates this luxury tax based on the sum of all your accounts. We're actually being pretty gentle with this amount, and it's very small. One interesting thing you'll see in this law is that we're dividing the wealth by 10 and then multiplying it by 0.05. What we really wanted to do is to tax each player a half a percent of their total wealth on a daily basis. But that number would have been 0 .005. And the game did not allow us to go three decimal places deep in a number. So to get the value we wanted, we needed to divide the wealth by 10 to gain that extra decimal place for the calculation. We've had to do that on a couple of laws where the amounts we were dealing with in percentages were actually quite small. So you can use these arithmetic functions in the game to scale up or down values to get the math right. So those are the three main tax laws that we have in place. A basic sales tax, a property tax, and a luxury tax. And we have a couple other taxes as well, but they are very specific to certain items and don't really apply globally to everyone like these three tax laws do. Lastly is the best law of all, and one I'm going to spend a little bit of time explaining because it's hugely powerful for being able to enact government-funded building programs anywhere on the server for any kind of building. This is how it works. I briefly talked about this in a prior video but I wanted to go into a little more detail to see some specifics that really make it work. The first four sections of this law addresses each of the four tiers of material you can build in the game. The tier one materials like mortared stone and hewn log are all in section one. The tier two materials for the brick, glass, and lumber are all in section two, and so on for tiers three and four. What this does is pay each citizen a certain amount for every block they construct of a given material. The higher the quality or tier of material, the more per block they get paid. The triggering event here is any time a block is constructed or deconstructed, and both of those events are evaluated later in each section. What's important for this to work as a reusable law is in the district requirement. District 5 is currently what's been designated for government builds. And in the zoning office, we can immediately designate a given area as District 5. These districts in the zoning office can overlay on top of one another. So for instance, we may have a district that covers a huge area for all of Plainsville. Another district laid on top of that, which is for the Plainsville Town Center, and can then overlay another district on top of that that's specifically for a build site that might be for expanding the courthouse. This means that the payout for the building of things will only occur in these small specified districts that the government lays out. Once the building project is complete, the build district can be removed. This is what makes the law reusable for any location in the world where we want to initiate building and doesn't require us to revise the law or create anything new to govern that. Over on the right-hand side, under the then statement, 
it pays a specified amount for constructing the block. And then we'll tax and remove that payment if the block is picked up or deconstructed. This just keeps it very fair and prevents people from gaming the system by just picking up and setting down the same block over and over. They actually have to progress and build more to get paid more. This exact same construction is replicated for each of the four tiers and incrementally pays out more for each tier. You of course can tweak this part and pay as little or as much as you want for each level of building material. There are also 11 more sections in this law that play a critical role in making this whole thing work. Those first four sections have only paid the citizen a small amount for performing the construction, but we also need to cover the cost of the material. Otherwise, they'd probably wind up at a loss having to buy the material they put down. Now, there are various ways to be able to handle this, and we could have had the government pre-purchase all the materials, hold them in a stockpile, then distribute them when it's time to build something. And we've tried things like that. But without getting into all the details, we found out it was hard to control access to the materials and also prevent exploits, even unintentional ones, in that kind of mechanism. This has seemed to work out better because it retains that open market concept across the entire server for the person doing the build to try to find the best price for a product or purchase them from whoever might be the nearest retailer. The government doesn't have to worry about acquiring the product beforehand and managing it in some way, which just feels a lot better and easier to operate. This payment for the cost of the material works because the cost of the materials has stabilized over time to these somewhat negotiated amounts. Without needing to do price fixing, these payouts have also helped set an appropriate cost for an item that's neither too high nor too low. The key part of this law has to do with the skill requirement. If a person has the skill to make the given product, then they won't be paid for the cost of that material. They'll only get that additional bit for the construction. This keeps it completely fair and equal across all individuals on the server. For example, if you're not a brick maker and are buying bricks to complete a government project, you get paid back for your material and wind up with one coin profit for laying the brick down. If you do have that pottery skill and make your own bricks, you still get paid one coin for every brick laid. We've used this law to build a charcoal-fueled power plant and are also using it for a contest to see who can design the most desirable covered bridge for our many ocean-going roadways. But that contest, how it was set up, and hopefully seeing the winner is a subject for another video. All you need to do right now is like and subscribe if you want to see how that was done. And trust that I'll be talking to you later.